Hello, my dear friends. How is it going? I'm Mario Ferriger, and today I'm going to talk about a point, or better still, the change of behavior and how we build a perspective of respect towards life when we start to take our first steps into paganism. And the more we strive to become pagan, the more perceptible and expanded this approach to life becomes, which I think it is important concerning the pagan mentality. The respect towards life and all living beings is developed through a sense of responsibility. And it is this very perception of responsibility that forms one of the defining roots of the world accepting view of paganism. Now, uh, I'm not going to develop on the fundamental premise of being pagan, uh, nor will I speak concerning the meaning of a world accepting view. I've done that before in other videos um, for those coming into this channel for the first time or if this is the very first video of mine you are watching, I will leave two videos by the end of this very video uh, that may prove to be useful concerning this idea of a world accepting view. But indeed, concerning paganism, it, it all eventually comes down to the reshaping of our perceptions towards life and striving to build a more world-accepting view. There's no paganism without a world-accepting view because paganism in itself not only is a celebration of life, but also the effort to construct symbiotic relationships with persons of the world, be those human, animal, other than human or more than human persons, but also a celebration of everything that comprises life and the endeavor to formulate and establish practical behaviors that helps to immerse ourselves in life. So, in other words, paganism isn't a question of fantasizing about a life and a world elsewhere, but it is to enjoy life and to celebrate real relationships we have with persons of the world and the all of nature and the spiritual development that leads us to find what we strive to accomplish as individuals in a greater web where everything is interconnected. The more we interact with life and the relationships we create, our minds will keep pushing ever forward into a sense of responsibility towards other lives. It ceases to become an individual spiritual quest seeking salvation or some otherworldly reward to eventually become a passionate respect towards the collective liveliness that promotes the continuation and growth of life itself. So this leads us into a greater sense of responsibility and we start to measure our actions and how it affects other lives and ultimately the whole of life. We start to become more animistic in our approach towards life. Uh, this doesn't mean that all pagans are animists or that all animists are pagans, but what both have in common is the respect and responsibility towards and the celebration of life. In other words, having a world accepting view. So, um, let's see how today's video goes. Let's explore a little of this responsibility towards life, shall we? My dear friends, please, let's get started. From the pagan lens, there's the necessity, even the inner impulse to interact with life and be part of it, to feel connected to our natural surroundings and find a sense of belonging. The more we interact with the natural world, the more we want to be part of it and engage with a wider environment where every living thing presents a purpose, an interaction, a part to play in the larger ecosystem. We move from our own space of existence and how our own existence manifests itself towards others living in that same space and the impact of being alive to a broader panorama beyond our own space. Becoming a pagan is like forming circles of knowledge and we progressively move towards other circles as we go, never forgetting the core of our existence. We become sort of like a tree. We have our roots firmly fixed on a specific level of knowledge, but we progressively expand our roots and form a deep and vast network of roots that end up being connected with other roots and other trees. 
we also move from circle to circle, from the space of our existence, to how we interact with others around us and vice versa, to another circle or other circles, which is the impact of our interactions and actions, the effects and how it affects and uh, this chain of consequences, reactions and developments will affect others from other circles. Effects that ripple and come back to us. This forces us not only to take action, but to also measure our actions in response to any problem. Eventually, this leads to take real practical and physical behaviors as a response in order to maintain symbiotic relationships as much as possible for our own benefit and the benefit of those involved. The behaviors often come in the form of the use of magic, be that traditional or the reshaping of traditional folk magic in order to adapt behavior to each circumstance. Magic in paganism becomes an experiment that develops and enhances our involvement and immersion in life to create change. If we have the sense that all living beings are participating in life in their own ways, under their own consciousness and the effects of individual thoughts, we understand that this participation makes the world what it is. So we begin to build respect and responsibility because we become aware of the effects of our own actions, because we too are living and participating in life just like anyone else and every person of the world. So, for a pagan, it becomes important to engage in the celebration of life, preservation of life and, the, and to expand our relationship with those that comprise life and participate in it and make the world what it is, not just through magic, as magic is often used or employed with the purpose to, of, of, of creating change, but also through the, the yearly celebratory seasonal festivities. Each moment of change in the cycle of nature is worthy of being celebrated because it marks a renewal of relationships. Moments that by themselves are moments of change, which forces even the change of mentalities from a variety of beings that live and participate in life. So seasonal changes are moments to build, maintain and even renew relationships because everything is constantly changing. So it becomes important to celebrate and remember relationships that are important to us, but also through which a life becomes more bearable, meaningful, pleasant, beneficial, productive and even successful. As we live in a world where we are very much part of nature, our existence is also affected by the decisions and relationships of others. Such relationships that have not been created by us or with us, but just in the same way that our actions create effects and consequences, the relationships of others beyond our own reality of relationships will also eventually affect us in certain ways. So this also pushes the pagan person to do the effort to interact on a broader existence, make itself be known and try to manifest its emotions towards others, such as with the entities or we often call spirits or deities, ancestors, spirits of place, etc. So, <laughs> the pagan person tries to engage with the entities of the world in order to affirm its existence, let itself be known, but also to be part of the relationships of others and strengthen these relationships with gods and other uh, all manner of non-human persons to establish respect between persons. So we expand, expand, sorry, uh, we expand responsibility unto others. How they engage with us is the response of our engagement with them. In a very basic sense, it becomes the celebration of nature because there's the real participation in nature and we want to see change for the better. And this pillar, this bedrock <laughs> in the structure of a world accepting view challenges other people's and others' worldviews and personal beliefs rooted in the separation of human from nature and even the separation of human from land and space. It challenges to do the exact opposite of that. It challenges others to change and to reshape their perceptions of life and their worldviews. 
It reinforces the importance of responsibility towards the space in which we exist and take action every day. It reinforces the respect towards other persons of the world, human or non-human, and we, we become much more immersed in life, which helps to understand and build knowledge on how we should interact with the earth itself and all its inhabitants. In this way, pagans start to build a clear mindset that detaches itself from the modern westernized religious practices and the way westernized societies are composed, which is often from the perspective of exploiting or exploitation of land and its resources, as well as the exploitation of persons uh, that leads to a total lack of respect for life, thus contributing to the destruction of relationships between persons. Pagans distance themselves from this and become more like the individuals of indigenous societies in the sense of recognizing kinship between humanity and the rest of the wider community of life. As I said, more often than not, workings of magic is to create change in the world on different levels for different purposes. However, the celebration of nature and life by itself, which challenges modern human behaviors, also promotes changes. Changes on a social level, from awareness to taking real action. Unfortunately, indigenous peoples have not had a lot of chances to express themselves and their ways of life have been for far too long seen as primitive and even childish. And the modern westernized model of social, economic and religious structures has often been seen as sophisticated and advanced when compared to social model, models of indigenous peoples. So the importance of creating connections and relationships with the land and the respect for life has often been overlooked. And indigenous peoples rarely have a voice on environmental matters. However, with the rise of paganism and the re-establishment of a pagan mentality that is very much akin to an animistic indigenous lifestyle and worldview, awareness has been created, change has been created, especially the changes of mentalities and behaviors because paganism, in this case neo-paganism, comes from people very much within Western societies capable of seeing that the westernized post-colonial model of life is wrong and it is rapidly destroying the world and there's an intensive rupture of relationships with nature. So voice has been given to those who have always had a voice to be heard in the Western societies allowing a um, reshape of mentality and forcing to have attention to what is being told in relation to the envir environment and the, the importance of celebrating nature and to recognize kinship between humanity and the wider community of life and the importance to build relationships with the land and space and its persons. Neo-pagans did not bring something new but gave voice to the voiceless which in turn made the westernized societies to pay closer attention to indigenous peoples. Like, wait a minute, uh, what, did, what these neo-pagans are saying, the indigenous peoples having, have been saying it all along, <laughs> right? In a way, neo-paganism has promoted a genuine interest on the affairs, lifestyle and the worldviews of indigenous peoples, who are very much in contact with the land and their religious structures and belief systems revolve precisely around the animistic symbiotic relationships with the persons of the world, which leads to affirm the importance of having the sense of responsibility of our actions and the real effects that our behaviors have upon wider communities of persons. It has awakened the importance of being responsible towards life and be very much aware of the responsibility that must always exist in every action we take uh, in, the, in the manner through which we contact and uh, interact with life. Neo-paganism forced changes in this way as well and progressively we turn to indigenous peoples who are still the experts on how to deal with the land and its peoples and the necessary respect 
uh, and the symbiotic behaviors to ensure the continuation of life and to promote the regeneration and growth of life. I think the easiest and the most comprehensible example uh, is precisely to understand the great opposites between civilizational structures fixed on the domination of humanity over nature and the structures of indigenous societies. It's no coincidence uh, that empires such as Rome have eventually collapsed, uh, not just the pressure on its borders, but the very pressure from within. The control of mankind over nature and the exploitation of resources and enslavement of peoples, which eventually became a saturated model and collapsed. Ruins is the fate of all empires, whereas indigenous societies endure even though the, with the process of colonization, enslavement, genocide, uh, displacement of populations, cultural and religious indoctrinations, indigenous societies, one way or another, continue to exist, and some of which continue to thrive. Neo-paganism reawakened within the westernized societies the importance of being responsible towards nature and its peoples. Neo-paganism may have started from a bunch of, of hopeless romantic individuals who could not fit in uh, precisely because they must have seen that the societies in which they lived in were already saturated and saw the great negative impact on life from the part of such societies. But neo-paganism has been taking shape and has become a movement for radical change. The corruptive systems of governance of our Western and or Westernized societies have reached a point of absolute saturation again and doesn't serve anymore. And by the day we become more aware that humanity cannot distance themselves from nature, nor should it seek to adapt nature to its whimsical wishes, but rather humanity needs to once again reshape itself and adapt to nature and see humans as integral beings of the ever-changing, intertwined community of life. Perhaps unconsciously, neo-paganism has opened the door for indigenous peoples to have uh, a voice in this matter, or, or rather uh, to have their voices finally heard that before had fallen on deaf ears. And now we can combine the efforts, we can combine the knowledge and together reshape our worldviews and fight against the modern abuse that has been going on towards the entire world and towards the very core of life. So I think this is, <laughs> this is yet another important pillar um, in the worldview of a, of a pagan, or at least an important perspective that all those who identify themselves as pagans should have in mind and very much put to practice this importance of celebrating nature, honor it and actively participate in life with, uh, with a real sense of responsibility. Sorry, um, hold on, <laughs> there's a, a serpent here, a very poisonous serpent. Olha, deixa lá ver como é que eu vou fazer isto. Está tudo bem, companheira. Eu não sou uma ameaça, não estou a fazer mal nenhum. Vá, vai para casa. Isso. Fisgate. Vá. Tenho a agenda toda preenchida e não tenciono morrer hoje. <laughs> Sorry, I thought I, I was hearing something the whole time. <laughs> uh, as I was saying, uh, well, paganism promotes, um, or rather um, expresses the importance of placing humanity within the vast system of relationships, instead of detaching itself from the interactions we should be creating and nourishing with the ever-evolving dynamic of nature. Responsibility towards nature and all life is precisely what dismantles the consecutive abuse of nature and its persons from the part of those in elite positions. I think we could say that paganism, in a sense, is a radical movement. Not in a negative sense, mind you, um, radical in the sense that it exists as yet another essential movement that comes to question notions of right and wrong, uh, moralities, <laughs> religious thinking and uh, social behaviors that contribute only to the prolongation of suffering, hate, prejudice, that will 
conclusively lead to the downfall of humanity and consequently to the downfall of the rest of life uh, and uh, the rest of the wider community of life. Paganism ends up being a perception of life that ultimately leads to environmental activism because from the moment we understand the earth itself as a sentient being or at the very least possessing consciousness, we start to change our behavior and the more careful, uh, be more careful, sorry, um, uh, in relation to our actions uh, that ultimately affect the natural world. We become aware of the impact of our actions. If the world is pulsating with consciousness and that, after all, hundreds of thousands of non-human beings are also sentient, we progressively become more responsible in the way we conduct our actions because we know that others may also suffer terribly just the same way we do. So not only there's the necessity to ponder and measure our actions, but also to converse and try to establish relationships with non-human persons in order to understand the extent of impact of our actions and what can be done to mitigate harm, damage, pain, suffering and even death as much as possible. It's not possible to completely stop all suffering, unfortunately, it's true. But it is possible to either reduce it or augment it. With a sense of responsibility towards life, we strive to reduce suffering as much as it is possible. So, this way of thinking that goes in line with animistic indigenous worldviews is essential if we strive to create a better and peaceful world. From the moment our societies not only accept, but perhaps most importantly, understand the ever-flowing of life and the consciousness and sentience of nature and the world, and not simply a mere source to be exploited to satiate human needs, then we shall start to have a very uh, different approach on the way things have been conducted and persons in positions of power will modify their attitudes when it comes to environmental issues uh, and the production of resources, uh, the rights of indigenous peoples, the preservation of land, the importance of adapting and reshaping urban planning to minimize its impact on uh, natural habitats, minimizing the exploitation of natural habitats, thus preventing global epidemics, encouraging alternative forms of energy production, a much careful economic distribution, promoting veganism, uh, supporting organic farming, governments obviously helping animal agriculture farmers to adjust in the transition from animal agriculture to a less evasive production of plant-based resources, encourage and support small-scale and regional per permaculture, uh, restoring autochthonous flora, protect and strengthen the grow and production of endemic plants and stop modifying plant genes, thus promoting a greater variety of, of plant foodstuff and facilitated the introduction of such products in local, regional and global markets, thus stimulating the local economies and avoiding poor poverty, famine, displacement of populations, destruction of cultural identities and natural habitat, <laughs> sorry, etc, 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 a lot of examples. I could go on forever. <laughs> This perception of life will get us closer and closer to the worldviews of animistic indigenous societies, thus promoting a far better understanding and cooperation between peoples working together towards a common goal, which is the preservation of life and minimizing as much, as much harm and damage as possible, creating stronger and closer relationships between humans and the living world. So, Paganism is very much activism because it's a radical change of mentality. Radical in comparison to the oppressive, destructive and ostracizing, colonizing hierarchical patriarchal structures of governance that have progressively created a detachment between human and nature, leading people to feel completely out of touch, not just with nature but with themselves. because. The natural existence of a human being is in nature, very much under an understanding of being a member of the wider community of life and not a being completely detached from it in some parallel dystopian civilization. Paganism is a change of mentalities, reinforcing the need 
to change governance and, and leadership and being more attentive to the collective and being sensible enough to care for the needs of the various different groups that form the collective. So, <laughs> once again, paganism is a celebration of life and a celebration of responsibility. And when things aren't right, when there's injustice and suffering, there's real action towards change and to make the world a better place to live. For all persons of the world, obviously. Paganism is the celebration and honoring the interconnected relationships we create with persons of the world, be those human and non-human, and to celebrate diversity and the everlasting consciousness and cyclical rhythms of nature. So, that's it for today. I hope you have enjoyed it. I almost died back then. <laughs> no big deal. Who gives a shit? <laughs> Actually, uh, I wouldn't die that quick. <laughs> I would be in excruciating pain and my suffering would last between 48 to 72 hours until I died if I couldn't get to a, a place with antidote, obviously. <laughs> Nature is beautiful. <laughs> well then, thank you so much for watching. I hope this video was useful. Have a wonderful day. See you on the next video. And as always, thank you for today. Farewell, my dear friends.